Hi, Stephen Elliott of CoherentBreathing.com. In this brief YouTube post, I'd like to lead you through my mantra, breathing is a circulatory function, during which gas exchange occurs. I make this emphasis because most people don't understand this. Uh, they see breathing as a gas exchange only function and don't, really don't know of its significance as a, uh, a motive factor in the flow of blood itself. Blood flows in a circle in our body. Um, when we inhale, blood flows from the pervasive capillary circulation, which you may know is tens of thousands of miles long, if stretched out end to end, into the venous tree under very low pressure, uh, pressure that is just slightly below atmospheric pressure. Uh, when we inhale, of course, air flows into the nose and into the lungs, and likewise, venous uh, blood fills uh, the venous tree flowing through the right heart and into the lungs to meet the incoming air. During exhalation, blood empties from the lungs out the pulmonary vein into the left heart and is there pressurized and checked uh, such that it then flows into the arterial tree and is distributed throughout the uh, pervasive capillary circulation again, really representing all of the organs of the body, all of the um, uh, capillary uh, distribution of blood throughout the body here, including uh, the head and brain. Now, blood should flow in this circle unimpeded and it should flow very much or it should move very much um, as a pendulum swings. In other words, it's a sinusoidal affair such that when we inhale, blood flows freely from the capillary circulation, filling the venous tree, ultimately then uh, filling the lungs with blood and as we exhale naturally, uh, blood leaves the lungs flowing out through the left heart and into the arterial tree. This circle, uh, this circulation occurs with every breath we take when breathing is slow, deep, and rhythmic. When breathing is slow, deep, and rhythmic, it generates this wave in the circulation as viewed uh, at the capillary circulation. This was taken at the earlobe, but we can see it in the fingertips. Uh, we can see it uh, anywhere we attach a, a plethysmograph uh, to the capillary circulation of the body. It is also visible in the brain when viewed with hemoencephalography. On the other side, at venous return, here uh, is the sensor at the medial cubital vein. Uh, it works opposite to what we see uh, in the arterial tree. Um, here we see the uh, medial cubital vein of the arm emptying during inhalation and filling during exhalation. Emptying during inhalation and filling during exhalation. That's because when we inhale, we're drawing blood out of the capillary circulation into the venous tree, through the right heart, and into the lungs, emptying the venous tree of some volume of blood, let's say um, 500 milliliters or so. And this occurs again every time we inhale and exhale. Now, a 
critical factor here is depth and rhythmicity of inhalation. And that is because it is important that we empty the venous tree into the lungs um, on a regular basis. If we fail to do that, then the blood languishes in the venous tree, blood languishes in the capillary circulation, and the arterial blood that the heart is pushing has nowhere to go. So now our circle is not flowing freely. It is impeded ultimately by the uh, blood that's backed up in the venous tree and blood that's backed up in the capillary circulation. And when that happens, uh, arterial pressure must rise. And the autonomic nervous system knows about flow and pressure in the arterial tree, and it compensates for this by increasing the pressure with which the left heart tries to move the blood into the uh, arterial tree and into the capillary circulation. The imperative here is that the capillary circulation ultimately nourishes all of the cells in the body, estimated at approximately 100 trillion. Note that there are 42 liters of fluid in the, in the body in total, but only five of those liters are blood. This blood making this circle um, estimated in contemporary medical literature as flowing through this circular system one time per minute. In other words, the five liters makes its way through this loop one time per minute. This is the typical adult uh, rate of blood flow to which I refer. And the typical, um, the typical adult has no wave action uh, visible in their capillary circulation no wave to speak of. All we see is a uh, heartbeat. Uh, here I have delineated uh, with these two dashed lines. The difference between the uh, cardiac systole and diastole being nominally 40 millimeters of mercury or 120 over 80. So if we subtract 80 from 120, we get 40 millimeters of mercury. But when we add deep rhythmic action of the diaphragm, then this wave is immediately visible in the capillary circulation or in the venous circulation. And we see that the the peak to peak from the peak systole to the valley diastole, that being here, um, I've theorized before based on this Valsava wave pro recording that it's approximately 70 millimeters of mercury peak to peak. This happens to be a GE Pro 400 uh, blood pressure monitor uh, that responds to blood pressure peaks and valleys in an accurate, reliable way. And it, it's demonstrating 122 here and 57 here, or an actual measurement of 65 millimeters peak to valley. Now the significance of this is that this pressure differential ultimately results in flow. So while blood is moving one time per minute, the five liters I'm referring to, um, when we add another 25 millimeters of mercury to the overall pressure differential, um, we can anticipate then that blood is moving um, at least one and a half times faster per minute than it is when we are not. When we are not, 
the heart is charged with pushing blood into the arterial tree and the right heart is charged with vacuuming blood back into the lungs through the venous tree. When we add rhythmic, deep rhythmic diaphragm motion to this, then the diaphragm moving downward generates negative pressure in the thoracic cavity in which both lungs and heart reside. This negative pressure drawing venous blood back via the right heart and the right heart then shuttling it under very low pressure into the lungs. And um, upon exhalation, again, the blood leaving the lungs due to elasticity of the lungs shrinking during exhalation and out into the left heart. So here we have the diaphragm, a very strong, powerful muscle under our conscious control, assisting in moving the blood in this circle. And uh, we see here that it's uh, adding a significant amount of pressure differential. And with that, uh, a significant amount of flow should follow. Now, we can't really know about flow without invasive catheterization. But theoretically, it should follow uh, this increase in uh, pressure differential. Now, with this, we're seeing pressure differential across the capillary circulation and into the extracellular fluid environment, um, that of the interstitium, where, where the vast majority of cells in the body are residing. Um, those cells are floating in nine liters of extracellular fluid and then the remaining 28 liters of fluid in the body are contained inside the cells themselves. And when we have exchange going on as a consequence of pressure, pressure differential across the capillary circulation, then we can anticipate that there's much greater fluid exchange going on between the cells of the body and the capillary circulation, such that the uh, the greater circulation looks like this, right heart, lungs, left heart, arterial tree, capillary circulation, extracellular fluid environment to the cells. Fluid flows back out of the cells upon inhalation, back into the capillary circulation, back into the venous tree, through the right heart, and back to the lungs. Now, there are other organs in this loop, of course, the kidneys being one of them. Um, and the blood is flowing uh, through the kidneys all the time uh, to be cleaned and filtered. There are also the other pathways for fluid out of the extracellular environment, uh, that being the, the lymph system, uh, etc. The interstitium supports these different channels that allow uh, fluid that are in the cells to be moved, cleansed, uh, hydrated, uh, nourished, etc. So this is circulatory physiology, the big picture. What I encourage everyone to learn to do is to move their diaphragm with depth and rhythmicity in that depth and rhythmicity set up this wave and give us a lot of the benefits of exercise, even though we may be sitting comfortably in a chair. Uh, the diaphragm is a large, strong muscle that can be moving all the time, circumstances permitting, and will move all the time on our behalf when properly trained. I hope uh, this makes sense to everyone. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.